Hello and welcome to my channel. My name's Carol Manning and in this video I'm painting this pair of ladybirds. Friend or foe, I've put the top because I'm not quite sure whether they're there as to fight or get along or just happen to be on the same leaf. So I've got my drawing done and taped down all ready to start doing some painting on. Before I get going, I'd like to say thank you to those people who subscribed to me I just went over a thousand subscribers last month, which I'm ever so pleased about. So thank you very much if you're one of those. I know it's not much in the scheme of YouTube, but it's important to me. So I'm starting by putting washes down and I'm starting with a wash, very diluted, of Windsor Orange, which I'm putting over the shell. And it's just a case of working my way around that. I'm not using a very big brush on that. This, this is a number three brush, round brush. And I'm adding into that some diluted cadmi cadmium free red. I'm using Windsor and Newton professional paints for this, but they'll be similar paints in most sets. So if you make a go over the edge at all, just lift it up with a bit of water and kitchen roll. And then just doing the same with the other ladybird. I like to get a wash, coverage wash to start with and then I'll build up the layers from there. This is a pretty easy painting so I put down it as a easy to paint one because it really can be done by any levels. I've probably faffed about round up on it a bit more than you need to, but it's pretty straightforward painting. And I'm then going to go over the head area with Payne's Grey. The wash is very diluted and just covering the area of the head, although, although strictly speaking the head's the only the front third of it. Um, the rest is called um, pronotum, P-R-O-N-O-T-U-M, pronotum. And I guess it's a, like a shell over the, that part of the body. But the eyes are, from what I remember from when I looked at the anatomy, where that white mark is to the left of that is a, a black eye and obviously similar on the other side but they don't show up on really when you look at them and the white parts are just markings I think the legs on this aren't strictly anatomical I've drawn them as you can see them on the photograph because I think where the sort of got the shadows and legs overlapping they sort of on the anatomically on the legs they have like a thicker part on the top half of the leg then a thinner bottom half of the leg and then like a two prong claw at the end but I have strictly painted this as it looks in the photo. And as I said, it's sort of a mixture of the fact the photo's blurred slightly and there's legs overlapping. So doing the coverage on this with Payne's Grey, again, this is uh, fairly diluted and it will be the first coat and likewise just putting a coat over the markings the spots the reference photo for, for this is from Pixabay and the link is in the description below and line drawing can be found at the end of the video if you wish to pause the screenshot or likewise 
it can be found on my Facebook group. I'd put PDFs on there of any images I do, line drawings, or if I've taken the photographs myself, they'll be up there as a PDF. So I'm using a bit of olive green as the background wash for the leaf. And I'll also be working over this with sap green. very diluted at this stage. So I've just mixed up some more cadmium free red but a little bit more concentrated this time and I'm working my way over the shells with this. Trying to keep it smoothish. I don't want any harsh wash lines. I'm working my way around those light areas next to the black spots at the front of the shells. So if you get any areas too dark, just lift it like I did a minute ago. Then I'm also adding in some alizarin crimson onto it to get those darker values. So mixing in with the cadmium free red, it's still wet at this stage. And for the very darkest areas, I'm using some magenta. Referring to the reference photo at all times, I have my reference photos in front of me on my tablet when I'm doing this. I don't bother printing them out. I like to have them on my tablet so I can zoom in and out to get the details. And likewise, lifting some bits here where I know can see those highlights. I will lift other areas later on as well. Putting some of those darker bits back in. Putting a bit more of the cadmium free red on. As I said, most paint sets will have very similar colours in them. And then working my way across the second ladybird. I very sensibly on this one went just went over the spots. I don't know why I didn't do that on the first one. It's easier to go over the spots, so if you're doing this yourself, go over the spots. Put in some of the Windsor yellowing on this one as well because it's lighter than the left hand side ladybird and there's that very light area you can see on this one where the shell opens where the wings are hidden under the shell Just should build your layers. Um, as I say, I'm trying not to let it paint bloom at all because I don't want marks like that on it. But I am at this stage doing wet on wet, which I often don't do, funnily enough. I 
tend to prefer wet on dry but for this particular thing it's it does work and I'm now starting to go over to the head and what did I say it was called the pronotum a bit above the head so where those two smaller white dots are that would be the top of where the head is and then the rest of it is called this pronotum at least that's what it looked like on the anatomical drawing bit I looked at this will have another these will all have extra layers going on them you build it up and the layers you get the depth of color to it put a little antenna in putting the feet in I say they look a bit club like on this but that is how it looks on the photo and so I think it's because the le far, le far side legs and the four side legs are overlapping slightly So I'm adding in some ivory black as well. Now to get the darkest value on this. I'm using a miniature brush at this stage. The white brush, it's a 10 stroke zero brush. There's a list of all the materials I use for this painting in the description if you're interested at all. So now starting to work my way around the spots as well, all the markings. It's just a case of going around it all very carefully and I'm repeat, repeating this with the other ladybird in a second. Now going over the shell again with a slightly more concentrated cadmium free red wash. Just a case of building it up until you're happy with it, really. Putting a bit of the Windsor orange in the middle there. Okay, do the same with this one. It is a case of layering to to be sort of happy with what you've got. I 
also normally build up from fairly diluted to more concentrated colours. I do come back to do that odd spot that I seem to have missed all the way along. <laughs> I don't know why I did that, but I do pick that up in a minute. I was watching this thinking, why didn't I do that one? But I do come back to that missing one. be lifting some paint later on to create some more highlights as you'll see when I get to that stage of the painting. And now I'm going to repeat the process on the other side starting with the Payne's Grey and building up it up to the ivory black. I quite like doing insects there Interesting creatures. Got like watching them. I do quite like photographing them, but I never I don't know how I've actually got a Canon um proper um big camera, but I don't know how to use it. And I tend to use my smaller automatic one that's got a very good zoom on it and I really do need to learn how to use the other camera properly. I don't really know what all the settings are. I've had it for a few years and just never got round to finding out, figuring out how to use it. In fact, one of the... I belong to a craft art craft group that I um, exhibit and sell my work through. They have a couple of venues going at a time throughout Pembrokeshire. I oh, sort of sell cards and prints and what have you there and have to do a couple of sessions stewarding. Sorry there was a jump there, I don't know why that got missed. Um, but yes, one of the people there is a photographer and he is doing a couple of courses in the summer. That's what they do, some some people do some runs courses. I'm just using some very diluted um, Windsor Orange there, all over those spots. And yeah, he does. He's doing some courses on some basic photography, so I might go along to one of those. See if I can learn how to use this. I'm using some very diluted, um, really, really diluted. The winds are orange there, and just blending in a bit of grey into it, because the those spot areas on the face there, they're not bright white they're sort of creamy greyish colour so I'm just toning those down at the moment so I'm just putting some of the cadmium free red into the legs area because if you look at the photos you can and onto the black area that pronotum because you can see sort of a reddy colour on there I'm just using a fairly stiff flat brush to lift some areas, highlights just keeping the you 
using clean water and a bit of kitchen roll where needed. I'm just looking at the reference photo to see where the highlights are and just lifting those bits. Actually lifting some bits around the legs as well because well, they ended up looking a bit more blocky than they should have. So the only problem with photos of insects is they're often not, you don't get total clarity of a lot of the areas. I've almost done a lot of the ladybirds now, so I'm just picking up some spotting that. Ha oh, I'm not the cleanest of painters, so I always end up with the odd spots here and there. So just a bit of clean water and a brush and a bit of kitchen roll tends to lift them. Any marks? So I think that's the ladybirds done for now. I will be coming back to do a little bit on them later on. So the next step is to start working on the leaf. And I'm starting with the coverage of a bit of um, mixture of sap olive green and sap green. There's that little bit of the top of the stem of the leaf that bit bulges slightly, that's very sort of greeny yellow. And I'm back with a slightly bigger brush. I think this is a number three I'm using. All my bash brushes are fairly basic ones, none of them are sort of expensive fancy ones. Just going carefully around the legs because I don't want to end up with a black running into it. Slightly darker under where the Feet are so I'm using slightly more concentrated paint there. Because you can see the leaf quite closely, there's a lot of markings on it that you can see that you wouldn't be able to see if you were um, slightly further away. So I'm putting some more concentrated sap green on the stem at the moment. Bottom half of the, the leaf is darker as well. I say it's it's fairly straightforward. This it's mostly a case of just following the lines. I say it's a pretty easy easy paint in this one. Now 
along the, as I was saying a bit earlier, they lost my train of thought. Um, the leaves have got a lot of like little markings on them. Well, the top part of the leaves got like lots of little white markings and darker green markings, like little lines. And um, the stem's got lines going up. And but what I thought I would do to lift, get those white markings is use salt. Um, so I've laid down the salt now. You'll see it jumps in a minute and the salt disappears. Basically, I didn't leave it long enough. You normally have to use leave salt for a few hours to get it to um, dry off properly and then lift the paint. It does create a really nice effect when you do it, but I basically only left it for an hour or so. And when I lifted it off, it was still wet, so it didn't really do anything. So you'll see in a minute it disappear and I do something else instead. So I'm using a white jelly pen to just emphasize some of the highlights at the moment, some of the lighter highlights. Just adding some dotting in just to give it a little bit more oomph. And I'm just again referring to the reference photo, looking to see where I can see light areas. And just added these little dots in to give it a bit more of a bit of a highlight. Just put in some, actually some of those diluted orange into the lines into the that greenish area. It has actually got a bit of an orangey tinge, which is obviously why I'm doing it. And then putting some of the sap green in lines into the stem, vein lines. Getting that darker, that lighter area, a bit of a outline but looking at the reference photo now I think I should have come taking that middle area out a little bit to the left sometimes you don't see for when you're working closely with these especially because I've got the lights on for paint for filming I sometimes don't see things as clearly as I should More dots going on. You obviously don't have to do these dots. You could, or we could use white, concentrated white, um, either a gouache or um, acrylic paint, or just concentrated watercolor paint. tend to faff a bit with these little steps. As you said, I told you there was a jump and the salt disappears and that's where we are at the moment. So I'm starting with some, putting some markings on, I'm actually using some hooker's green for this. And starting to put some of the darker values in. So, if, 
Just using lots of little dotty lines. Do you need either a small brush or a big brush with a very fine tip for this? Following the lines on the leaf as well. Obviously it curves at the edges. some of the olive green there to on that section there and then working my way around I've got a bit of um sapri mixed with the Payne's grey that I'm using here to create where, create where these shadows are underneath the ladybird's legs. Just mention briefly while I'm doing this, um, so I'm picking up bits of salt there that's still on there. Um, I do have a little face, um, newsletter that I'm doing. Well, I've only just done one so far, and I've got another one coming out at the end of this month. If you, it'll be a sort of mixture of a blog, shop updates, and occasional discount codes. So if you're interested in signing up for that at all, the link to that's on my webpage, on well, the sign up form, um, can be found on my webpage, which is listed in the description below so if anybody's interested i say it's sort of a bloggy um, life as an artist type newsletter and i'll only be doing it occasionally once probably every couple of months so using a slightly lighter sap green there Now I've done the, that, I'm back to using the jelly pen to create the white marks. That's what I was hoping to do with the salt, but I say I was just impatient and didn't leave it long enough. I do quite often, you do use salt for texture effects. I quite like the effect it gives, but you do need to give it time to do it. Ideally, I often leave it overnight if I'm using that, but um, I didn't have much time to get this painting done, so as it is, I'm going to be putting this up late, later, sort of a day or two later than I normally do because I've been so busy lately. Life's just got very busy and I struggle to find time to get this video done this week. I decided I was going to put in just the odd touch of black line with a fine black liner. This is um, a Stedler waterproof pen. So it's got quite a fine line. So I'm just putting in some really fine lines with the black. So you don't need to do this. I could have, you would have stood alone as it, without this, but I just like to add. I like to add details. It's where I was drawing that line across the head, oh, across there, there a minute ago. That was where the headline is. So just emphasising those 
claws and they do have a few little hairlines when you look closely on the legs as well so I'll just put some of those in. This is very much referring to the reference photo zoomed in and just seeing what markings I can see on it. You can see my hand going across it's because I'm zooming in to, on my tablet that I've got on the other side so I can really see what details you can see on this I say it is sort of quite not very sharp the details on this so it's is trying to draw what you see in the photographs rather than what would anatomically be correct so that's the finished picture I hope you enjoyed watching if you have I'd really appreciate it if you could press the like um, button as it helps my channel to grow and if you'd like to see some more please subscribe and press the notification button so you actually see them come up when I do do a painting I know sometimes they don't show up otherwise and here's the line drawing and the link to the reference photos in the description below. Thank you very, very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you here again.